going steady, aka greasy kid stuff, aka Lemon Popsicle 2, is a nostalgic teen sex comedy set in 1950s Tel Aviv and released internationally in 1979. Nostalgic teen sex comedy is a very specific subgenre, but a potent one, and that genre's origin began five years earlier with American Graffiti, directed by George Lucas. Lucas created a story about one night in the lives of some small town teenagers in the days of the greasers, and that formula of cars, teens, and early rock and roll was a blockbuster, giving Lucas the clout to finance his next pet project. American Graffiti established a formula that Hollywood was eager to duplicate, paving the way for Happy Days, Grease, Animal House, Porky's, and in Israel, Two movie producers decided to take their shot at this gold mine, with a movie about one summer in the lives of Israeli teenagers in the 1950s. Eskimo Lamon became Israel's biggest box office hit of the year, and retitled as Lemon Popsicle, it debuted at the Berlin Film Festival and began playing in theaters around the world. The 1979 sequel cemented the series' formula. Three young men run around town trying to sow their wild oats before the world makes them grow up. Bobby, or Momo, is the tough guy. Johnny, or Huey, is the big guy. Benji, or Benzi, wears a medium shirt, maybe a size 8 shoe. Anyway, Benji's our Romeo, discovering Tammy, a girl that he doesn't just want for a Saturday night fling, although that's on the agenda too. While he's still a wingman for his friend's shenanigans, he tries to win Tammy's heart. Mistakes are made, secrets are revealed, hearts are broken. Will anybody find happiness? First question, is this comedy actually funny? Well, there's two lines that exemplify the sense of humor of this movie. Excuse me, but I think I'll go get laid. Aren't you gonna share it with your buddies? If you wanna make it a gangbang, then follow me. What's happening to my fish? They bit me. Where? On the nuts. Next, is this movie sexy? If you want to make it a gangbang, then follow me. Not really. There's nudity, but nothing that makes any of the guys or girls eye candy. There's some naughty action, but most of the movie is about the guys getting cock blocked at every turn. So the courtship scenes usually stop before they get anywhere. Does this movie have something to say about growing up? The biggest message I got was, boys aren't men. The next time I watch this will probably be when my daughter is ready to start dating boys. And I will show her this film as a warning. Don't date a Momo. Or a Benji. Even you is a problem. Is there anything particularly Jewish about this movie? Even without the classic American rock and roll soundtrack, the movie could pass for an American teen sex comedy. Then again, Israel the Nation was established in 1948. By the time that Chubby Checker had the whole world twisting, over two million people from around the world had planted roots in Israel, bringing the pieces of the cultures they left behind as they started building an identity of their own. Anyway, it's one of the few Israeli films I've seen that doesn't involve politics in this story, which may be one of the reasons these films were so embraced in their time. The Lemon Popsicle series was the start of long and fruitful careers for the three leading boys in the Israeli film industry anyway. Only Jonathan Segal, who played Momo, ended up in a couple of Western films. Also, he was a staff writer for the Israeli production of Sesame Street. The movie was a launching pad for writer-director Boaz Davidson, who'd start making movies on the other side of the Atlantic as a director and producer. And most of all, the Lemon Popsicle series was the big break for the producers, Manam Galan and Yoram Globus. As Golden Globus, their financial success allowed them to buy the Canon Film Group, and they became two of the most influential independent film producers of the 1980s. Their meteoric rise would be matched with an equally meteoric fall, with many a cult classic made along the way. Nostalgic stories can do many things. They can help an audience revisit the good old days. They can vicariously reshape those memories through today's eyes, or reframe today's world and today's issues through the lens of yesterday. Maybe even have an audience reminiscing about a time that they never experienced themselves. <laughs>